Hi everyone. So the second part of this lecture uh, for adsorption and design of adsorption tower with stages. Let's continue. Okay, so the learning outcomes. Uh, the first learning outcome has been supposedly achieved in the previous part. So in this uh, current video, you, you, can de you should be able to determine the number of equilibrium stages for a specific absor specified absorption and straightening process using both graphical and analytical method. And the rest of the learning outcomes will be continued in part 3. Okay, as mentioned before, most adsorption or stripping operations are carried out in counter current flow process. So the gas flow upwards from the bottom of the column and the liquid solvent is introduced in the top of the column. So let's say you have a system containing solute A in the gas phase B uh, along with inert air B. So you have uh, in the gas phase here, you have solute A and B is the inert air. So this is your solute. And the liquid phase L contains uh, solute A along with inert water C. Um, so this one, your solvent is C and then the absorbed solute is A. Sometimes um, your inert, inlet liquid solvent may contain some of the solute A, especially for recycled solvent. But uh, in this case, let's assume that the solute A only exists in uh, the outlet liquid phase. So let's assume that air is insoluble in water and that water does not vaporize to the gas phase. So the gas phase is binary AB uh, system and the liquid phase is binary AC system. Meaning to say that in this case, in this system, component A is the only component that redistributes between the two phases. Okay, so only component A moves from the gas phase to the liquid phase. But component B, the inert air, does not go to the liquid phase and the component C from the liquid phase does not go to the gas phase. So we can uh, write a component balance on A. Let's say if you have in this uh, V2 stream here, you have the uh, concentration of solute A, Ya2, and concentration of solute A in the outlet gas stream V1 is Ya1. L0, the concentration of solute A is Xa0. And L1, the concentration of solute A is Xa1. So we know uh, material balance is in equals to outlet. So if the total material balance is L0 plus V2 equals to L1 plus V1. But for component A, you can write down the balance just adding the composition of component A in the respective streams. Another useful method to write down the liquid and gas flow rates is in terms of the inert liquid and inert gas only. Because in this case, um, let's say for example V2 and V1, this is the total gas flow rate including both the solute and the inert air. But um, let's use solute free basis. In terms of solute free basis, you can write down instead of L0 for the solvent and L1 for the solvent and solute, you can write L prime. So let's define in terms of solute free basis, L prime equals to L0 1 minus Xa0 also equals to L1 one, 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 times 1 minus Xa1. Then you will get the um, flow rate of the liquid that is free of any solute. Similarly, you can um, do the same thing for V, uh, the inert gas flow rate. So V prime equals to V1 times 1 minus Ya1 and also equal to V2 times 1 minus Ya2. So this is the only the flow rate of air that does not distribute into the liquid phase. So we can write down um, the material balance equation the component balance equation this one in terms of solute free basis uh, to replace that so from here so from here you can get L0 equals to L prime over 1 minus Xa0 and um, L1 equals to L prime over 1 minus Xa1 and also the uh, 2 equals to V prime over 1 minus Ya2 and also V1 equals to V prime 
over 1 minus ya2. So, replacing um, these terms into this, this into this, and also the same thing for the vapor flow rate, V2, replace with this, and V1, we replace here. Then you can write down um, the component balance for A in terms of solute free basis uh, into this equation. Okay, just replace L0 with this and then replace V2 with this. Okay, and so on. So you should, you can pause the video now to work on uh, deriving um, this equation. Okay. So this equation can be extended to multiple stage equilibrium contact too by doing overall component balance. We will do that. So this one is just for the uh, single stage equilibrium contact for gas liquid system. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the example. Let's say you have a gas mixture at 1 atm pressure absolute containing air and CO2. So you want to remove the CO2 by contacting in a single stage mixer continuously with pure water. So pure water here is your solvent which will absorb the CO2. The two exit gas and liquid streams reach equilibrium. Uh, the inlet gas flow rate is 100 kmol per hour with a mole fraction of CO2 equals 0 0.20. The liquid flow rate entering is 300 kmol per hour of pure water. Assume that water does not vaporize to the gas phase. Calculate the amounts and composition of the two outlet phases given that at the given temperature 293 Kelvin, the Henry's law constant for CO2 in water is 0 0.142 times 10 to the power of 4 atm per mole fraction. In any problem given, first thing you should do is to draw a diagram. So this is your single stage um, vapor liquid contact. So you have Vapor inlet V2 equals to 100 kmol per hour and your YA2 is 0 0.20 and you have V1 and you have Y1, YA1. And then you have your solvent, your pure liquid water is 300 kmol per hour heat and it's because it's pure water, your XA0 is equal to 0. Then this one is L1 and XA1. So given the Henry's law constant is 0 0.142 times 10 to the power of 4 atm per mole fraction. Okay, so let's use our material balance equation in terms of solid free basis which is L prime times XA0 over 1 minus XA0 plus V prime times YA2 over 1 minus YA2 equal to L prime times XA1 over Y minus XA1 plus B prime times YA1 over Y minus YA1. Okay, so now um, your L prime equals to L0 times Y minus y XA0 and your XA0 is 0. So L prime equals to L0 equals to 300 kilomole per hour. And then your V prime is, um, okay, you're given V2, so V2 times 1 minus Y A2 equal to 100 times 1 minus 0 0.2 equals to 80 kilomole per hour. Um, so you can put in the known and unknown into this uh, material balance equation. Okay, so you put L prime is 300 times 0 over 1 minus 0 plus 80 times Y A2 is 0 0.2, 1 minus 0 0.2 equals to 300. X A1 you don't know, so you just put X A1, 1 minus X A1, sorry, sorry, plus uh, 80 times Y A1 over 1 minus Y A1. Okay, so you simplify this equation, you shall get 20 equals to 300 times XA1 over 1 minus XA1 plus 80 times YA1 over 1 minus YA1. So this is the material balance. 
and uh, for single stage uh, equilibrium contact, uh, this in the question also it was mentioned that the vapor and liquid streams leaving the stages are in equilibrium. So why A1 would be in equilibrium with A1? So we can write down the Henry's law for the system. So Henry's law P A equals to H A X A because of the unit of the Henry's law given here. So Y A P equals to H H A X A. So just to be sure that Y A1 is in equilibrium with X A1. So we put Y A1 and X A1. P is just um, 1 ATM. So Y A1 equals to H A 0.142 times 10 to the power of 4 by the Y1 ATM times X A1. So you have this equilibrium relationship. Uh, Y A1 equals to 0.142 times 10 to the power of 4 times X A1. So in this case, you have two equations and two unknown. This is equation 1 and this is equation 2. You can work on solving uh, x a1 or y a1 first, whichever. But uh, the idea is you have you can solve for x a1 and uh, then y a1. So let's uh, say you solve for x a1. So you solve for x a1, you can get x a1 equals to 1.41 times 10 to the power of minus 4. And then if you solve for x a1, then you can get y a1. So y a1 equals to 0 0.20. So what happened here? Um, so initially, your inlet concentration is 0 0.20, and also um, your YA1 is also 0 0.20. And then initially, your XA0 is equal to 0, but after absorption, uh, XA0 is, let's say, 0 0.000141, which is very, very small. So uh, the, the question also asks you, uh, other than to calculate the composition of um, the liquid and vapor exiting the absorption column, also ask you to calculate what are the V1 and L1. So V1 equals to V prime over 1 minus A1 equals to uh, 80 over 1 minus 0 0.2 equals to 100 kilomole per hour. And um, L1 equals to uh, L prime over 1 minus XA1. Uh, after you put in the values, you can see that it's close to 300 kilomole per hour. So it's as if that nothing really happened here because when you feed the absorber with 0 0.20 concentration of CO2, you still end up with 0 0.20 uh, CO2 at the exit. And uh, so, what what went wrong? So, what's your conclusion here? So, okay, ideally in the class, I would ask you and um, ask you to try out some answers, but we can't do that here. So, I would just tell you that in this case, um, it looks like water is not a good solvent to remove CO2 from the gas phase. So maybe you could, you could try a different solvent which can absorb CO2 more readily such that YA1, ideally you want YA1 to be much less than uh, YA2, then only the absorption is effective. You can also infer the solubility of CO2 in water by looking at the um, HA, uh, the, the Henry's law constant here. Okay. Okay. Um, previously in week three, we have derived the operating line equation for distillation column. So we can do the same for. Uh, absorption column as well. So we can review some notes on week 3 if you um, want to recall. So let's say you have a absorption column here where you have the total number of stages from stage 1, stage 2 and so on and so on until stage N, uh, capital N. So let the total number of stages be um, equal to N. So for a total number of stages N, the overall inlet and outlet are so we um, as, as we have previously uh, in the last slide, we only look at just one 
um, stage. But in this case, we are looking at n number of stages. So the inlet gas uh, to the column is Bn plus 1 and the outlet is Ln. And for V1 and L0 is the same like previously. Okay, so for the total number of stages and the overall inlet and outlet are as follows. And then we can do a total overall balance for n stages. And if we put the com uh, component, uh, the composition of the solute in these streams as y n plus one, or sometimes you may see y a n plus one, it means the same. So it's just the concentration of solute a in the uh, respective stream. Sometimes I put n, sometimes I didn't put n, but it, it, it means the same. Okay. So v one we have y one or y a one. L not we have x not or x a not. So you can do the overall component balance for n stages such as this from uh, you can see in the equation two. And uh, also for the first n stages, small n inside the column. So let's say our control volume is small, uh, the inside of the column here. Okay. So for the first n stages inside the column, the overall inlet and outlet uh, flow rates are as follows too. And then you can do the total overall balance for the first n stages and also for the uh, component balance. So here you have y n plus 1, small n. Here you have x n. So just uh, replacing the uh, nomenclature. So from equation 4, you can rearrange uh, equation 4 to put y n plus 1 as the subject and you shall get to this equation in the box here. So essentially, you can still have the ln over Vn plus 1 as the slope of the operating line. And this is the y-intercept. So if this is y equals to mx plus c. So this is the operating line for an absorption column with total number of stages n. And but in this case, is inside the column, small n. So this operating line um, relates the concentration yn plus 1 in the V stream. So we relate this concentration yn plus 1 uh, with the xn uh, of the stream passing it. So your coordinate would be uh, xn and yn plus 1. This is the point in the coordinate. So the terms V1, Y1, L0 and X0 are constant and usually known or can be determined from equation 1, 2, 3 and 4. Let's do example 3 to apply the operation operating line to straight away uh, show you how to calculate the number of stages. Okay, so in this example, it is desired to absorb 90% of the acetone in a gas containing 1 more percent of acetone in air in a countercurrent stage tower. The total inlet gas flow rate to the tower is three, uh, 30 km per hour and the total inlet of pure water flow to be used to absorb the acetone is 90 km per hour. The process is to op operate isothermally at 300 Kelvin and put a pressure of 101 kilopascal. The equilibrium relation for the acetone in the gas liquid is Ya equals to 2.53 times Fa. So determine the number of theoretical stages required for this separation. So similar with um, distillation, whenever you want to calculate the theoretical number of stages, you need to have one, the equilibrium line. And this is given by the equation Ya equals to 2.53 Xa. Or if you are not given the relationship, you need to have the Ya and Xa uh, data to plot the equilibrium curve or line. And then the another thing that you need to calculate the number of stages is the operating line. So this is all you need to calculate the number of stages in an absorption column. So it's much more simpler than a distillation column so you don't have the Q line, ROL, SOL and so on. So again, to solve this problem, you should visualize and draw a diagram. So this is your column. This is stage 1. At the end of the column is stage n. So your in the vapor inlet is Vn plus 1 with concentration Yn plus 1. And the vapor outlet is V1 with concentration Y1 of the solute. And your liquid inlet is L0 and X0. And the liquid outlet is Ln and 
extent as the solid concentration. So given from the question, temperature is 300 Kelvin and pressure is 101.3 kilopascal. And given the equilibrium relation is y a equals to 2.53 xa. So Vn plus 1 here is 30 kilomol per hour with the concentration is 0 0.010. And the L0 is 90 kmol per hour with X0 equals to 0 because it's pure water. So um, we know that the column wants to absorb 90% of acetone. So you can know that in V1, Y1, uh, there's only left 10% of the remaining acetone. So equals to 10% of whatever is acetone is being fed to the column so this would be equals to 0 0.03 kilomole per hour of acetone in the uh, exit gas okay and also 90% uh, of acetone will be absorbed so the 90% will appear in the uh, liquid outlet so LNXN equals to 0 0.90 times 0 0.010 times 30 this one will be equal to 0 0.27 kmol per hour of acetone in the uh, exit liquid stream okay and uh, so v prime what is the v prime V prime would be in this case Vn plus 1 times 1 minus Yn plus 1 equals to 30 times uh, 1 minus 0 0.010 equals to 29.7 kmol per hour of air. Just air without the acetone in it. So from the V prime, you can calculate what is V1. Okay, because V1 is um, air plus acetone. Okay acetone plus air so v1 would be 29.7 kmol of air plus uh, 0 0.03 kmol of per hour of acetone so this one is 29.73 kmol per hour of air plus acetone so if you know v1 is 29.73 and you know v1 y1 is 0 0.03 then you can find y1 so 29.73 y1 equals to 0 0.03 then y1 equal to 0 0.00101 so you can write down here y1 equals to 0 0.00 101 and v1 is 29.73 kmol per hour. Next, we can do the same for um, xn. So for um, L prime equals to L naught equals to 90 kmol per hour. So this is uh, pure water. Okay, and then um, ln xn is. Uh, this 0 0.27 so ln would be um, 90 kilomole per hour of water plus 0 0.27 kilomole per hour of acetone so ln is uh, 90.27 kilomole per hour of acetone plus water so you can find xn so 90.27 times xn equals to 0 0.27 which then gives xn equals to 0 0.003 so here you can put xn is 0 0.003 and ln is uh, 90.27 kmol per hour so that is just the um, material balance so far that we have done so from material balance, you can obtain the two coordinates for the operating line. Because remember, the operating line relates this uh, concentration with this concentration. So there are two points of the operating line here. One is 0, 0 0.00101 at the top of the tower and 
another point is uh, 0 0.003 and 0 0.010. So these are the two coordinates for your operating line. So again, just to put the values here. So y1 is 0 0.00101, x0 is 0, xn is 0 0.003, and y n plus 1 is 0 0.010. So the coordinates are 0 and 0 0.00101 and this and this. Okay, next is you need to plot the equilibrium line. So given y a equals to 2.53 times x a, so one point for sure is 0, 0. Okay, so that is your one point. And um, also, this is actually uh, y equals to mx equation, so it is a straight line. Uh, so just need another point. So because your uh, operating line, the coordinate is 0 0.003 here, so you need to find any point beyond 0 0.003. So let's say if xa is more than 0 0.003, just put any number can be just 0 0.004 then y a is 2.53 times 0 0.004 equals to 0 0.01012 okay so this could be another point on your equilibrium line so what you want to do now is to plot a graph okay y like this and the x like this so one point is the Okay, let's plot two lines. One is the equilibrium line, one is the operating line. Okay, first plot the uh, operating line. So one point is this one. So this point is 0 and 0 0.00101. So this is at the top of the tower. And another point at the operating line is 0 0.003. Okay, just let's say this one is 0 0.003. And uh, it's at, let's say, uh, so this one is 0 0.010. So here you get two points. So just um, draw a straight line that will give you the operating line. The next is the equilibrium line. So equilibrium line, one is 0, 0 and another is 0 0.004 and uh, maybe somewhere here, 0 0.01012. A bit higher. So just connect these two dots to get the equilibrium line. So, next, how you want to calculate the number of stages is you do stepping of the stages just like what you did in the distillation column, but in this case, it's just two straight lines. So, one. Two, three. I mean, uh, this is only approximate. I will show you the real uh, graph in the next slide. Okay. So um, another thing to note that is that operating line here. Um, in this case, we have assumed that it's a straight line. Assume a straight line because of. Um, the dilute solution of this, the dilute concentration of acetone in the inlet air, because um, actually the operating line is y n plus one equals to l n over v n plus one x n plus l not x not minus something I don't remember. Maybe v one y one something, and then uh, yeah something I don't remember. The thing is. Uh, if you assume it's a straight line, then you are assuming the m is constant. So in this case, we are assuming ln over vn plus 1 is constant, meaning vn plus 1 over ln is the same with v1 over l0. If it's just uh, roughly different, then it's okay. We can assume the operating line is a straight line because of the dilute concentration of acetone. We will talk about it in the next example later. 
Okay, so if you use Excel to actually plot the lines, you, you can get these two lines. So the blue line is the operating line and the orange is the equilibrium line. Um, just some minor correction here. It should be 0 0.00101. Um, so what, what to do next is you need to do stepping up the stages from here. So 1, 2, 3, Four, five, okay, five something. So here, um, yes, you should calculate. So this is one stage, two stage, three stage. It's this way, okay? This is one stage, two stage, three stage, four stage, and the five stage. But Five. If you stop here, you don't get the actual uh, end concentration here. So it's actually somewhere here. So it's about five point two stages or anything uh, approximation. So if it's a full stage, then you you go all the way here. So I just estimated to be five point two. Um. Okay. So this is how you calculate the number of stages based on the operating line and equilibrium line in an absorption column. So this is also another, I mean, if I were to give an actual lecture, you would have seen this. So I just want to show you this step by step. If you, maybe some of you can understand this solution better than what I showed earlier. And okay, so the same thing happens here. We plot equilibrium line and operating line, and then about 5.2 theoretical stages. So previously, I have shown you how to calculate the number of stages using graphical methods. So another method to calculate the number of stages is to use analytical um, an analytical equation uh, for countercurrent stage contact. So same thing, uh, we have this uh, column here. Uh, starting from the overall column, uh, overall component balance of the solute, you can start here and then you rearrange. So you can pause the video if you want to just try to rearrange uh, the equations on your own such that you get to this final step not, not really final step until this step and then we assume constant, mo constant molar flows or constant molar overflows like what we did in distillation previously so the flow rate of liquids are the same and the flow rate of vapors are the same throughout the column so instead of ln and vn and so on you can just uh, use L and B without the subscript. Alright, so um, if Y n plus 1 and X n plus 1 are in equilibrium and equilibrium line is given uh, if it's a straight line is given by Y equals to MX so by putting n plus 1 as the subscript. So if we now I would like to introduce you to a new definition of absorption factor. So define an absorption factor as L over M B. So M here being the uh, gradient of the equilibrium line. So from the previous slide where you have this uh, equation here, you can rearrange this equation. So L and Fn X capital M equals to V Y N plus one minus Y capital M plus one. And, uh, and also y n plus 1 equals to m x n plus 1. So you just uh, replace uh, the y here with this. So you can work on this derivation. If you're interested, if not, you can skip it. m x n plus 1 minus y n plus 1. So then we go on and and then put the n to that side L over n b x n minus x n x n plus 1 n plus 1 into n then the this is equal to a so you get a x n minus x to n equals to x n plus 1 minus y n plus 1 over n Okay, then rearrange the equation uh, such that you get this. 
so you can do them in your own so from here uh, y n plus 1 and x n and m is a constant or specified i mean everything on the right hand side is constant or specified and this equation is a linear first order differential equation can be solved using finite difference method um so if you want to solve this equation the derived equation is finally called the Kramsar equation so here what you want to find out is the n the n number of stages so the derived equation will be shown in the next slide so i'm not going through the derivation of Kramsar equation from previous equation so if you want you can try to find it out on your own I just want to let you know that Kramsar equation has uh, two types, one for absorption and one for stripping. So this is the Kramsar equation. This is the Kramsar equation for absorption, i.e. the transfer of solute from the gas phase to the liquid phase. So you, the goal is to find N, the number of stages. So you should know by now what are the y n plus 1, y1, one, x0, where, where is it located? So here is the uh, y n plus 1, where is x n, but it's not in the equation. So here is uh, y1, here is x0. Okay, so if in the case of absorption factor A equals to 1, then the equation would simplify to just this for the absorption. However, uh, for Kramsar equation for stripping operation, i.e. the transfer of solute from the liquid phase L to the gas phase V, um, you should use this form of uh, Kramsar equation instead. So instead of um, A, you have 1 over A, the inverse. And instead of, I mean, you just uh, move around accordingly and you don't have to memorize this equation anyway. You just need to know how to use it. Okay, for the term, for the Kramsar equation, we have the term A. A here is absorption um, factor or stripping factor S. It's just 1 over A. So, what would be, uh, so let's say A equals to L over and B. So, what would be the unit to be used in L and B and the N? So, it doesn't matter what the unit is as long as it's consistent. If you use mass flow rate, then use mass flow rate. If it's more, more. If it's if this one M, if you are using y equals to mx in terms of mole fraction in y and x then it should also be consistent okay so if what if the equilibrium line is not straight but curved so what would be the slope m as i said previously y equals to mx obviously is a uh, straight line if you have equilibrium curve y equals to mx you should have something that looks like that but sometimes the, your equilibrium line is not straight. Sometimes it may look like this. So you may have different M at different location. Okay. So the slope M will vary and thus the value of A or S will also vary. So we have to see um, the absorption, for example. So let's take a look at absorption um, where uh, which part in the absorption column that has a high concentration in the solute. So as you know, for absorption, the gas inlet here is at the bottom. So the gas inlet has high concentration in solute and then the gas outlet has less solute concentration. So liquid inlet, no solute normally or very minute concentration of solute if you're using um, recycled solvent. But the liquid outlet will also contain high concentration in solute because it absorbs the solute from the gas. So the concentrated end is at the bottom of the tower in an absorption column. The dilute end is uh, at the top of the tower. So if you want to find out what would be the A absorption factor at different parts of the tower, you should take a look at the um, flow rate of the liquid and vapor at that part. So here is M, here is um, 1, plate number 1 and two plate number N. So here you have V, uh, no, 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 sorry, sorry. Here you have LN, here is VN plus 1, here is L0 and here is V1. So you have to calculate what would be A at the 
and pi. Okay, and pi. And what would be A at the number one part? So we have to take different values of M. What would be the values of M at different parts of the column? Then, if you want to use the transit equation, you should use the geometric mean of the A. So instead of just A, you should use the square root of uh, multiplication of AN and A1. Sometimes you only may use the values of A and M in the dilute end because at the dilute end you will require you will require more number of stages because it, it is actually more difficult to separate uh, to separate to absorb gases in dilute concentration compared to gases with high concentration. So you can apply the same concept for stripping. Uh, so for stripping Solute is in the liquid phase, so at the top of the tower is where you have a concentrated stage. So this is your concentrated area. And the gas outlet would be the high in solute as well. So the gas in is the stripping gas, so no solute in the stripping gas, and liquid outlet would contain less solute. So the um, end of the tower, the bottom of the tower would be the dilute end. So similar to absorption, if the equilibrium line is not straight, we need to find out the slope at the respective region. Same thing. Okay, so let's uh, try to use Kramsa equation to calculate the number of stages. Uh, same like example 3, but in this, this time we use Kramsa equation to calculate the number of stages. So from previous... Uh, Previous example, you have the column. Okay, you have the column. You have V V M plus one equals to uh, thirty, and V one equals to twenty nine point seven three kilomole per hour, kilomole per hour, and Y uh, M plus one equals to zero point zero one zero. And y1 equals to 0.00101. You have L0 equals to 300. Eh, sorry, 90. And X0 equals to 0. And you have Ln equals to 90.27. Lomo per hour and Xn equals to 0.003. Okay. Then uh, you can find out if, if you want to calculate what is A1. One is okay, number one is here, number n is here. So A1 is L0 over M times V1. So you get this. And at the bottom end of the process, you get different value of A, absorption factor. So this is the Ln, M, and V, N plus 1. So if you see that this is a dilute solution anyway, so it's not too much difference between the top and bottom uh, end of the tower. But still, just to be safe, we can find out what is a absorption factor at different parts of the tower. Okay, so you can uh, calculate the geometric mean of the end. Then because this is absorption, you can use Kramsa equation for absorption. So you already know what are the values for uh, y n plus one, y one, x uh, x naught, and a. So you just key in the values, okay? Key in the values. You can pause the video and try to do it on your own. And then you get n equals to five point zero four stages, which can be said to compare closely with five point two stages obtained using the graphical method. Okay, moving on to example 5, absorption in SO, of SO2 in a tree tower. So let's say you want to design a tree tower to absorb SO2 from the air stream by using pure water at 293 Kelvin. Entering gas contains 20 mole percent of SO2 and the leaving the gas, um, gas leaving contains 2 mole percent at a total pressure of 101.3 kilopascal. The inert air flow rate is 150 kg air per hour per meter square. So this is kg per hour and it's inert air. 
The entering flu water flow rate is 6,000 kg water per hour per meter square. Assume an overall tree efficiency of 25%. How many theoretical and actual trees are needed? Assume that the tower operates at uh, 293 Kelvin. Equilibrium data is given in the table in the next slide. So I just want to um, highlight in this example here, 20 more percent of SO2 here is considered a high concentration. So we cannot expect the operating line to be a straight line. In this case, I will show you that two points are not enough to construct the operating line and also equilibrium data given in the table here in the table here so you don't have a straightforward y equals to um y equals to <laughs> mx relationship for the equilibrium data but rather you have table when you have table very unlikely that you will have a straight line for the equilibrium line Okay, let's do the solution for this example. So you have your column. You have here Vn plus 1 and Yn plus 1 equals to 0 0.20. So you have V1 and Y1 equals to 0 0.02. Here you have your L0. X0 equals to 0 because it's pure water. And then your exit liquid and the composition. And given the V prime, the net air flow rate is 150 kg per hour per meter square. Then you convert this to kilomole. So 1 kilomole of air have 29 kilogram. So you have here 5.18 kilomole per hour per meter square. And then you also have your L prime inert water flow rate 6000 kg per hour per meter squared. Convert that into kilomole. So 1 kilomole of water contains 18 kg of water. Okay, so you have 333 kilomole per hour meter squared. Okay, so here you have V prime equals to 5.18 kilomole per hour and L0 is 333 kilomole per hour okay so we use our material balance equation in terms of solid fuel concentration L prime x0 1 minus x0 plus V prime y n plus 1 over 1 minus y n plus 1 goes to L prime xn over 1 minus xn plus v prime y1 over 1 minus y1 seems like you know this 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 but you don't know xn so our job here is to find xn first so 333 times 0 1 minus 0 plus 5.18 times 0 0.2 1 minus 0 0.2 equals to 5 oh no no 3 3 3 times xn 1 minus xn plus 5.18 times 0 0.02 over 1 minus 0 0.02 so you can solve for xn pause the video and try to solve on your own xn equals to 0 0.00355 Okay, so let's check if your operating line is a straight line. So Vn plus 1 equals to V prime over 1 minus Yn plus 1. 5.18 over 1 minus 0 0.2 equals to 6.475. So Vn plus 1 is 6.475. Ln equals to L prime over 1 minus Xn equals to 333 over 1 minus 0 0.00355 equals to 334.18. So Ln 
slope of the operating line at the bottom is ln over n plus 1 equals to 334.18 over 6.475 equals to 51.61. What about at the top? So V1 equals to V1 equals to V prime over 1 minus Y1 equals to 5.286. Let's say we have 5.286. So your slope of the operating line at the top of the column is L0 over V1 uh, equals to 333 over 5.286. Plus to 62.997. So, what do you say? Are the slope the same or is it different? Huh? So I would say that 51.6 and 63 is a lot of difference between the top and the bottom of the tower. So, the slope of the operating line can be said to change considerably. So, we cannot assume that the operating line is straight because the ratio of L over V is different. So we need some intermediate points for the operating line. So we cannot just use uh, V rho and 0 0.02 as one of the point and Xn 0 0.0355 and also 0 0.20 is one point. You need some point in the middle of the tower to plot your operating line. Okay, so from the material balance, you have some coordinates for the operating line. So here, yn plus 1 equals to 0 0.20 and xn is 0 0.00355, y1 is 0 0.02, x0 equals to 0. So the coordinate for operating line is 0, 0 0.02. And also here is 0 0.00355 and 0 0.20. But because the operating line is not constant in the um, slope, so you have to find some intermediate coordinate for the operating line. So how do we do that? So you need to find out the operating line at intermediate stages at small n, remember? So, find a, you can have a look back in the previous slide. You shall find this equation. Y n plus 1 minus y plus 1 equals to L prime x n 1 minus x n plus V prime y 1 over y minus y 1. So, our job here is to find out at n stages and n plus 1 stages and any stage in the middle here. So what we do is um, we set a value of either yn plus 1 or xn and find out the other value. Okay, because you already know L prime is what previously L prime is okay, I think ah, 333 so 333 3, 3 times 0 1 minus 0 so B prime you know also uh, 5.18. So these are the unknown. Equals to 333 xn 1 minus xn plus 5.18 0.02 over 1 minus 0.02. So this one is 0 lah. Okay. So here if we find out the coordinate. But it needs to be between these two values, okay, for x and y. So okay, let's say, so let's say if I specify uh, y n plus one equals to zero point zero seven, maybe somewhere here zero point zero seven. So what would be the x here? Okay, so the x here would be, and you just put zero point zero seven into this equation. And calculate what would be xn. So if you do that, you, you can get xn equals to 0 0.000855. So here you get 0 0.000855. That would give you another coordinate. So another coordinate is 0 
0.855 and 0 0.07. Then find out another point. What if uh, y n plus 1 equals to 0 0.13, maybe somewhere here? Then what would be the x here? Then xn, you put the values inside this equation. xn equals to 0 0.00201. 0.00201. So now we have four coordinates. Okay, this is uh, one coordinate. Okay. This is one coordinate, two coordinate, three coordinate, four coordinate. Enough for you to ascertain whether the operating line is a straight line or slightly curved or whatever the shape is. Okay. So this is a more properly written solution, type written solution, but I prefer to write down like what I normally do on the whiteboard if I were to be in a physical lecture with you guys. Okay, so the plot operating line, and then the, this is what I talk about in the intermediate operating, inter intermediate point in the operating line. So finally, so we plot the uh, operating line, the blue line is the operating line and the orange line is the equilibrium line. The orange line is what you plot using the uh, data given in the table. Okay, so if you can see that the blue line is not a straight line, the operating line is not straight. Okay, so same thing what we do to calculate the number of stages, we step off the stages. One, two, I mean one stage, two stage, um, 0 0.5 stages. Okay. So, yeah, you stop somewhere there. So it's like halfway through this line. So I would say that instead of three, this is 2.5 stages. So the answer is about 2.5 theoretical stages. But the question gives that the efficiency is 25%. So the actual stage would be 10. So instead of 2.5, you, you need 10 trees in this absorption column. All right. Any questions? No questions? Good. Or we can, uh, we can discuss during the Google Meet live session or in the WhatsApp group. All right. All the best.